first it wants to know how much the system is going to cost. And we know we want uh, a system for about 40 gallons of hot water per day. And so that's going to be our solar storage capacity. It's also going to be our collector area. Um, so if I just use Excel as a calculator, you get 40 square feet, multiply that by our, um, our current cost factor for a small system, like 40 square foot system, uh, it would be just $200 per square foot. $8,000 is what we have. Then we're going to go down and specify some information about the system. Solar tracking mode is fixed, where you can also have tracking. Um, I don't know of any solar water heaters in Wisconsin that track the sun, and if there were uh, such a system, uh, I don't think it would catch on and, and be used by multiple installers very quickly. Um, it would probably be patented and probably be an exclusive item. Uh, when we've got slope and azimuth inputs, uh, we want to double check for sure that we have the right azimuth. Uh, the easiest way to do that is with a satellite photo, uh, and luckily I do have a satellite photo of uh, the, this example site. Um, so we're looking at a, a house from the street here. Uh, this would be the example, and we're going to look at a satellite photo um, that I got from uh, the Dane County web mapping tool and we're going to verify that we are in fact oriented on a north-south grid where this is the street, the house is facing south and our solar area is this blue area that's the south facing roof area that we see here so we are due south and our pitch is 45 degrees for the south which is right next to our latitude. Uh, at, in Madison, it's about 43 degrees latitude, uh, and our pitch is 45. So we're talking about putting the solar collectors right on the roof surface. And then uh, red slope is 45. Red screen treats south as zero azimuth. And if you click show data in this box, it gives you the daily solar radiation horizontal and the daily solar radiation for your tilted plane at a 45 degree slope. So if your slope is mismeasured, if it's 36, that changes the radiation data that, that Red Screen uses to calculate the production of the system. You can see here, um, we've got an annualized version of this. How much solar radiation is there on the horizontal and tilted? So you can get a pretty good idea, um, you know, at, at 36 degrees angle versus 45 degrees angle. Um, what does that do to the uh, annual solar radiation that you get in that plane? Um, it bumped it down a little bit. Uh, if you went up to a, a higher tilt, you might even go, you know, 70 degrees. Now you're, you're really getting down there in terms of annual solar radiation. And um, if you had a system that was tilted up at 70 degrees, you'd probably be looking at a wintertime usage, which you could model with the occupancy. Um, but uh, we're really using red screen to model a year-round water, hot water load. Now we're going to talk about the equipment that's going into our solar water heater. Red Screen actually wants to use real data about the collectors that you use. So the first thing you need to do is specify the type of collector. We're not using unglazed collectors. We could use evacuated collectors, or we could use glazed flat plate collectors. Um, and you have to uh, go over to the side here from this box. There's a technical note, and please uh, read that, about uh, what the difference is between unglazed collectors uh, and glazed ones and how red screen treats them. But then if you click this next uh, box here, C Product Database, that's where you're going to get 
the information, the input. So I'm going to click on that again. And that brings up the manufacturer and model number. Different manufacturers uh, have different efficiencies. Um, from one to the other, you're going to look at you know, 40 square feet of collector from uh, AET, Alternative Energy Technologies. And it's going to be different than what you get from the next one on the list or the next one on the list. Um, but uh, generally, AET is about the, the middle of the road. Um, it's, uh, it's a solar collector that's not the highest efficiency, um, and it's, it's uh, much better than the, the lower efficiency collectors uh, for our climate here in Wisconsin. So we're going to look at a 40 square foot uh, alternate energy technologies collector. And if you're going to give this part of the report to the client, um, it's probably going to confuse them a bit. But if they're, if they're really uh, tech savvy, um, you can uh, give them, and they want it, you can give them this part of the report. You just need to take alternate energy technologies out of here uh, and change the model number to something generic. Um, say typical collector and 40 square feet that screen fills in these blue boxes uh, with its brain and uh, it gives you the gross area of the collector and the aperture area of the collector and it gives them in square meters if you change these units to feet the numbers don't change if you change these units to BTUs per hour per square foot per degree Fahrenheit these numbers don't change either well that affects Red Screen's brain uh, so what we need to do after we change those units is we gotta go back to the product database we've gotta select these collectors again and Red Screen will reinterpret these numbers. See how they jump? Now we've got about 40 square feet of gross collector area. That's what we want. Red Screen suggests that we use one collector. We're going to go ahead and agree with Red Screen. Um, generally, with larger systems, Red Screen will try to recommend a small system. Uh, you, might, you might be looking for a, a target of uh, 100 square feet of collector for a family of five and uh, Red Screen will want to give you uh, two collectors and you want three for instance uh, so you, you've got to select this yourself that's your input solar collector area 40 square feet looks good and then in miscellaneous losses here for a 45 degree slope roof, I'd say 1% uh, is about the loss that you get from snow and dirt on the collectors. If you're at a shallower pitch, you're going to collect more snow. It's not going to uh, fall off the collector as quickly. Uh, and you might uh, put on a higher miscellaneous loss here at the collector. Now with the balance of system, we've got storage on the system. And once we select a yes in this box, then we get an extra input. What's the storage capacity? We're going to look at gallons per square foot. And our ratio is anywhere from 1 to 1 or uh, up to uh, 1.5 to 1, uh, where we'd have a bigger storage tank than um, we'd, uh, we'd have square feet of collector. Uh, so if you had 1.5 gallons of storage per square foot of collector um, you might be above a 50 gallon tank and we do want this to reflect actual tanks that are out there so if we're if we're looking for a 50 gallon tank um, we should tool around with these numbers a little bit and, and try to get it close so that it models a system that uh, that could actually exist